Hi guys, it's finally getting to be a pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on Tuesday, March 17th, 2020. Pretty much a canceled St. Patty's Day around the planet as far as I can tell from Texas right on through to Ireland. But this is Sam Mitchell, I forgot to mention, and this is Collapse Chronicles, where we're doing a special series this week called Coronavirus Chronicles, where we're looking at the connection between coronavirus and the potential collapse of global industrial civilization. And for this segment, I am thrilled to bring in one of my two Probably my number one uh, lieutenant uh, here on Collapse Chronicles. We're going to go down to Brazil and uh, have a rare treat where we actually get to hear the wizard behind the curtain. And I think he just wants to go by the name of Jay. So we will, unless he wants to change that, we're gonna, simply going to call this man Jay from Brazil. And we're going to have get Jay's opinion on what's going on. Uh, on the planet today from his perspective down there. So Jay, come on and say hi to the folks here in this side of the camera and we will dive right into this. Hey folks, how are you doing? All right, good. Glad to be here with you. All right, and it's, it's always good to have a, a, a rare appearance by the, by the enigmatic Jay from Brazil. So Jay, as you as you well know, I'm just I'm just letting the people out there know who are not familiar with this series. What we are talking about is not so much the direct effects of coronavirus on human health. There's plenty of other YouTube channels such as Chris Martinson's to take care of that. What we are specifically zeroing in on is getting various uh, opinions and ideas about how coronavirus might trigger the collapse of global industrial civilization. And I'm just going all over the board looking for different uh, input on this. So we're going to invite Jay for his perspective. So Jay, let's just start out with the, the essay question on the test before we break this all down. Is, in your opinion, is coronavirus, could it be the trigger for the collapse of global industrial civilization, and why or why not? Okay, so my opinion is that the coronavirus or the COVID-19 uh, progress is, is, uh, is just one of the processes that, that's going on on the planet. So I don't see it as a trigger. It's just an additional one. And we simply tend to forget the others while we deal with this kind of restraints and this kind of world stress, but nothing changed. We still have the nuclear threat, we still have the, the, the pollution threat, even though a bit reduced lately, right? And by the way, the temperature hasn't risen. Talking to some guys over the web that think so. And, uh, and, uh, but it's only one process. I don't see it as a trigger at all. Okay, so I think it's, it's even not a surprise that this thing uh, popped up all of a sudden. It, so uh, so it's, it's just one of many, for, for people down here in this rabbit hole at least, it, it, it's just taking its place um, among a whole other host of uh, things. So where would you place the direct threat of coronavirus on the list of threats against civilization is it's certainly being treated by the media uh, and most of the public as the number one threat right now. Do you think it is the number one threat or does it belong at the near the bottom of the list somewhere in the middle of the top threats to civilization? Where, do you, where would you put it on the list? It's absolutely in the bottom of the list. I have no doubt. It's not a threat. It's a, it's, a, it's a temporary stress, and the, the stress is caused more by fear, and uh, because we are driven out of our normal patterns of life. I mean, we, I'm talking about the majority of the civilization, not the, the few folks that are down here in this rabbit hole, but uh, it's, a, it's very inconvenient, 
more than inconvenient. It's very dangerous for the paradigm. You know, if you live in a paradigm, the economic financial paradigm, you're in great danger. But looking at that from outside of the paradigm, which is my point of view, uh, I don't see any problem with that. All right. It's just uh, way, way down below, down the bottom part of the list. Uh, okay, so uh, it, it is good to have a wide spectrum of voices. Uh, this, should, this should stir up some debate, which is what we want to do here on Collapse Chronicles. Okay, so... Do you, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this question, uh, Jay, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you consider the direct health to human health or the knock-on effects to the global economy to be the bigger threat, uh, at least toward humanity, from coronavirus? Yeah, well, I guess, as you said, uh, the answer is quite obvious, at least for me. Of course, it's the economic uh, risk. Uh, the health risk, uh, as far as I know, right, uh, I'm not a scientist, uh, not even near that, uh, just an ordinary Joe here. Where I see it, it's, uh, it's, it's a virus. It, uh, it kills, but it kills less than the normal flu. Okay, because we, I know, yeah, the percentage looks high, but we have a denominator problem here. We don't know how people are, are really sick. So this number three, four percent we're talking about, I think it's not the real number. When you have the real number of infected, you will get to a very low percentage. So I don't see it as any health risk. And uh, by the way, if you look what happened in Italy and Europe, and you learned lesson, it's not so complicated to treat it, you know. Uh, if you look at what Korea, South Korea did, China is... A different ballgame, but uh, like the democracy, like South Korea did, they restrained the virus. But the, the fear, the effect of the fear on the economy is huge. So and where the economy can that lead, is uh, driven by fear and greed. That's so exactly. if the vector now is towards the, grid, the, the fear side, uh, it's, a, it's a huge risk to the economy, yes. If you think uh, uh, from the paradigm, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you 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 do need to add uh, that, that that little uh, asterisk from from the paradigm. Okay, so I want to break this next section of this short interview into two parts. First, we're going to uh, well, since I'm talking to someone from Brazil, uh, uh, I, I've been mainly talking about the U.S. But why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, Bozo Nero's, uh, how is the Brazilian government reacting to this? And so tell us a little bit about that. And do you think the Brazilian government reaction to the threat is overblown, not strong enough, or just about right? So let's separate Bolsonaro from the rest of the government, okay? Because Bolsonaro, at the minute he got his uh, negative result from the first out of two tests, he went out and high-fived about 100 people and took selfies with them. So the guy is completely moron, right? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Seriously, he, just, he got the result, he went out and started high-fiving and hugging and, and, and uh, taking selfies with, with uh, fans outside of his palace, right? So Bolsonaro, I don't count it as a reasonable human being. But what it's taking here, the steps that are taking here, is quite reasonable. Okay, there's not a total lockdown yet. They ask for elderly, I mean over 60, public sector workers to stay home or to work from home if they can. And they recommended it to the private sector, and they have some restraints, but nothing serious so far. And in terms of numbers, I think there is about 340 cases and one death, one confirmed death that happened today. But Brazil is complicated because let's talk about Sao Paulo, where I live. It's a city of uh, 12 million people. And if you take uh, in account the satellite cities, we're talking about 22 million in the same urban area. Every single day you have between 7 and 8 million people using the metro system. I'm not talking about the bus system because I don't know the number, but the metro carries about 7 to 8 millions a day. 
So you can imagine what will happen here if they will not uh, restrain the bit, uh, the, uh, the freedom of movement. But they're doing it gradually. Uh, I don't think they overreact so far. They have a lot of uh, information flowing from the media. I mean, important information, like what medicine to use or not, and so forth. No, not only wash your hands, you know, this is the trivial. But they give a lot of good information, at least in the formal channels. And I think they accept uh, the president, of course, yeah, which is, as I said, completely moron. Uh, uh, they act pretty well. So, but I don't know what will happen when the rate, the numbers will pick up because it works exponentially, right? We know that right. it works exponentially. There's no exceptions. Whatever it hit, it works exponentially. And when you apply exponential uh, for, uh, exponential function on a big number, it's bad. Well, some people. Jay would say you're contradicting your earlier statements that you don't consider it a health threat, but now you're calling uh, Bolsonaro a moron for uh, g going too much in the opposite direction. So may maybe you want to amplify and clarify your earlier statements that... Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Look, I live here. I have, I have friends here. I have family here. My son is not here, coincidentally. He's in Canada, but... Yeah, or most of my friends' family here. They are all clueless morons. They live in the paradigm. So I'm not talking about myself. So if the public, I mean the, 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 the low levels of the society, right, the lower IQ level, see the president acts like this, so they have a very bad example. And they can damage my family, my friends. Uh, okay, so... In yeah, the yeah. overall, I mean, in the overview, I don't think it's serious health risk. I don't. I, 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 I stand to, the, to that position that I, that I stand in the beginning. But looking from the paradigm, looking from the clueless morons, the, all my friends, my family, my partners here, you know, uh, he puts them in risk from their perspective. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, so if, I, if you ask me what if yeah. you ask me what is the right policy, I would go towards the. I don't know if it's today relevant, but uh, up to yesterday, the UK government, the British government, took another step. They had no restraints, almost no restraints, and they thought, I mean, the part, their presumption here, their hypothesis that the virus, the virus will spread, most of healthy people will get immune naturally, and they should protect the elderly. I don't know what happened today in the UK, I don't follow the news like uh, uh, religiously, but uh, I don't know if it stands there yet, but uh, I, I think it's I mean, I see it as a better strategy. Just let the thing go. Most of the people will get immune naturally, and it will go on. Okay, well, Protect let's... Protect the elderly. That's it. Uh, I, well, let's do... Well, let's look at the model of Spain, Italy, and particularly after yesterday, more and more the U.S., I guess, uh, Sam, starting with San Francisco. The, 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 the whole idea of, of, of lockdowns where... You, uh, if, if you're willing, and it's unbelievable uh, how people are so resistant to even wading into this conversation. Although I don't think you're a man afraid to wade into uh, to thin ice here. The, the the whole notion of government lockdowns, where you have governments basically tell, and particularly when it's backed up by police, like it is in like what's going on in Spain when it's backed up by getting arrested if you don't follow the protocols, do you believe that the threat of coronavirus, uh, to, to use a bad verb, trumps our civil rights? In other words, should a government uh, be given the power to curtail such basic freedoms as freedom of assembly, freedom of movement, and the, at least here in the U.S., what they used to call the pursuit of happiness in order to respond to this level of threat, or should this decision be left to individual choice to how they best want to protect their own health? Well, 
And again, I'm talking from the point of view of the paradigm, right? Okay. But, uh, and from the point of view of the paradigm, there are two options. One is the UK option, which again, I don't know if it exists anymore. <laughs> I think that Boris Johnson changed his mind yesterday, but I'm not sure about it. And the other option is the lockdown model. There's no other option here. I'm sorry, there is the Korean model, right? So the, uh, there is a way uh, to there is a way to to control this without restraint or heavy restraints on freedom of movement, like they did in Korea. It worked very well. If they had restraints, it was very very short period ones. You know, it was not long. It was not like uh, weeks long, and they controlled the disease. But the, for the philosophical uh, point that you're trying to uh, that you ask me about, right, is the you put on one side the civil rights, freedom of movement, and so forth, and uh, on the other side uh, the health of the society. So, uh, again, from the paradigm, if the government or the ruling, whatever regime, cho- chose to take the, the the European path or the, U- the USA path, so they have to do it. They have no choice. I don't see any other choice. They don't have any other choice. They simply have to do it. Yeah. Well, from your own personal, I, I, I want to hear from, from your own personal uh, convictions. Uh, do, do you, do, would you gladly surrender your right to the freedom of movement, the freedom of, of assembly, and your pursuit of happiness in order to to uh, supposedly uh, protect the the greater public health? Well, the answer is completely, definitely yes. If I live in a state like Brazil, they go in this direction, it didn't start, but they go this direction, and my friends here, my family is here, my uh, son is not here, but suppose he was here, I would do anything to protect them, okay? And uh, and I will follow the rules. And I don't. The pursuit of happiness, you know, I can have with you like three hours conversation about this pursuit of happiness wow. issue. And uh, I'm totally off the American pursuit of happiness concept. I don't think I don't I don't believe in that. In this kind of happiness, in this kind of pursuit of happiness, at any cost, you know, and whatever. But this is a very, very deep philosophical discussion, which is way beyond the scope of this conversation. Yeah, right? yeah, it it it, 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 cert, it certainly is, and uh, I, I would like to hear more discussion of it. But we do need. You're you're right. We do need to. Uh, we've got uh, we've we've got three more questions here, so I do have to okay. uh, to to move on. Uh, okay, forget the government authority. Uh, response. Let's get to the average person in society. What is the scene where you are as far as the panic buying and the hoarding and the buying of the guns and ammo and all of this? What are you seeing in uh, in, in Brazil in, in in Brazil today? Are the shells just being stripped. I mean, they are literally being stripped bare to the bone in grocery stores in Austin, Texas today. Literally being yes. stripped bare. Is that happening where you are? As a, up, up to yesterday, it didn't happen. I was in the supermarket. I did some shopping for a couple of days. Uh, normally, I, eat, I never eat home. When I live in a flat hotel, I always eat out, but I changed my habit. Now there's no choice. Uh, it's not so wise to eat outside at the moment. And and uh, But the shelves was full. There was no crowd. There's nothing of that. I don't know what happened today. Uh, I will go tomorrow and see what happens. But as, as for yesterday, it was pretty cool and relaxed and nobody hoard. I didn't see like oversized, overpacked shopping carts. Nothing of that. All right. I didn't see people with huge bags in the street. Huh. So far, up to yesterday evening, nothing. Very cool. Well, I, I, I now this is just my guess, brother. Is that your head is going to spin? You're going to be shocked if it follows the pattern that that it has in Texas over the past seven days. The the escalation and and how quickly. It went from the scene you described just then, right? At least in Austin, Texas, 
to two Mad Max in, in a period of 72 hours. It, 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 the, the unbelievable uh, difference that, that, that happened this week, that, that, that's happened starting, starting about Thursday of last week and over the past five days. What what has gone on in Austin, Texas? So, let me ask you: How would you rate? How would you describe the Brazilian media's coverage of this? Is it twenty four seven? Is this the only yeah. story on let the planet com- in Brazil? Let me just complete the the issue of the empty shells. Here, if it will happen here, it probably it will. I agree with you. The thing here, the difference between the U.S. and Brazil, that people in the U.S., more or less, most of them have the money to buy the groceries. Now, a large chunk of the population here, they don't have money. They work in the morning to pay their lunch and dinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what happened, what will happen when they don't have food? You can imagine real Mad Max, not Mad Max with credit cards, right? Mad Max with credit cards, (laughs) it's not real Mad Max. But here, here, it will be a real, it will come to this situation, I'm talking about 80% of the population here that lives not from paycheck to paycheck, from yeah. the morning to the evening. What they will do, how they will feed the children, I tell you how. They will take the knives and the guns and will go to the wealthy neighborhoods like I live, and they will take the money from the people, that, the, the food from the people that, that hoard it. And it's not... Yeah, it's really realistic scenario. So you don't rule no, that no, out happening here in the very near future in uh, in Brazil. This will go from 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 relax from like relax, relaxation like it was yesterday, maybe today, to complete Mad Max, but real with blood. I'm talking, not Mad Max with credit cards again, which is okay. Sweet Mad Max, or Mad Max. This is gonna be bloody here. If we will come there, I don't know if we we'll go there. I don't know, but. Uh, now, about the media, uh, I don't watch TV a lot. I do now because I'm stuck in my apartment, but uh, uh, the main channel, it's called Globo, they pretty much 24 by 7 around the corona. Once in a while, they have news breaks about other stuff, but they're pretty much, pretty much around that. This, this, this single channel, I haven't seen others, but this is one of the important ones here. So... Oh, they give updates, they give life updates, uh, advices, they interview uh, medical professionals and so forth, all the time. Yeah. It's the only story in the U.S. I mean, and, and, and it's why I'm taking this, uh, you know, for the next week, it's the only story on Collapse Chronicles. Anyway, do you think that there's going to be bigger threats uh, on the horizon, then coronavirus showing up, which will be even more certain to usher in Mad Max than what we are seeing. Is that a safe bet or not? I think nothing changed really in the in the rhythm, in the pace that uh, the other threats are progressing. It's the same. It's more of the same. Uh, the corona is the imminent. It's right now. It's visible. I mean, not the virus, of course, but the fear is visible. Yeah. The actions are visible, and so forth. But the other the threats, nothing changed in the nuclear scene. Nothing changed, yeah. uh, actually, really, in the pollution thing, scene. Okay, it's it's a kind of a, a short term relief because of China, but nothing changed. Nothing changed in the other horses of apocalypse. Nothing. The methane is still going there, uh, releasing itself, and nothing changed. The plastic is accumulating even more. Imagine what happened to the pollution now with all these masks and, and alcohol gel bottles, you know? Yeah. It's madness. The impact, the, the, the pollution, plastic pollution mainly, and the other pollution of, of the corona cycle will be immense. Immense. But you cannot so find I, a, a bottle of water, a, you know, one of these individual single-use bottles of water. They do not exist on the shelf in Austin, to every single, every single last individual bottle of water has been ripped off the shelves of Austin, and Texas. We all know, we all know where those bottles will find itself. Uh, we find them after the usage. We all know. And we're 250 miles inland from an ocean. So anyway, the final question uh, that, that I'm wrapping up these interviews with. 
So everything we've been talking about is, is me, 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 meaning humans, humans, humans. Do yeah. you see, if you were not a human, uh, or if all of the people uh, freaking out were not humans, but were other, any other species of Earthling on this planet, do you think they have a different view? Uh, if you were speaking for another a species of Earthling, do you? Do you think you would have a different view about uh, coronavirus than, than most humans have about it? Well, if I was a penguin, I would celebrate the Independence Day right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, I, I don't see any relief, uh, relief for our fellow Earthlings here. Oh, uh, really? I you see don't... more. I see, I see more stress. Yeah, the, the, the immediate relief in the air pollution, and, and you know, it's really, really short time. Yeah. But we all know that the the re rebound will be very strong. This virus will go, and the rebound will be very strong. People Probably. will buy more. I expect to to like apocalyptic rebound in terms of buy more in terms of purchases and, and of course the derivatives, pollution, yeah. uh, plastic, everything, everything. It's going to be a disaster after this thing will go. Yeah. Then, of course, people say, okay, maybe the humanity will learn from that lesson to run a more, like a modest way of life and be more human, you know, all this crap. But no, we will not. <laughs> you don't believe after that. You don't believe go, that for a minute. You're, you're not going to... You're, you're, you're not going to close this interview as others already have that I've interviewed on that on that uh, hopeful note. You, you don't think any lessons are going to be learned in this except... Uh, Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. Uh, I, 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 on the contrary, people are waiting for the rebound. Yeah. You know, now we're, now we're close, we're suffering, now we're, our, our pursuit of happiness is, 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 uh, is on hold. Now, when this thing will go, oh, now we have to compensate for this loss of the pursuit of happiness and whatever it means. This is crap. Okay, so let's go more for that. I mean, most of the population, of course, in some edges of the universe, some rabbit hole like this one, that maybe people will really change their way of life and they will uh, learn to live with less and travel less and, you know, spend less and spend more with the family and loved ones and all this. But... The majority of the human race will not do it. Wow. They will rebound. Wow. They will do more of the crap we did it before the corona, uh, after the corona. There That's you, my opinion. There you go. And uh, we we will uh, once we get to after the corona, we will see uh, whether you're right. But anyway, Jay, I we've got to wrap this up. We're running in on. 30 minutes so uh so guys if you appreciated what jay had to say about this then spend a few seconds thumbing up this video please and if you would like to subscribe to collapse chronicles by all means do that uh, while you're over here and do keep your eye out there will be about 20 more of these interviews coming out the next few days and jay we really appreciate not only you taking a half hour out of your busy schedule today but Brother, I really, really appreciate everything you have done for this channel the past two years. Let's all give give Jay a big hand. Collapse Chronicles would would probably not be on the air if it was not for this man. So blame him, not me. Uh, if you get if you get mad at me, it's all Jay's fault. Anyway, Jay, we we love you, brother, and keep up the good fight. It's mutual, Sam. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye, guys.